So we're updating the case of the missing mom, the woman from Salida, Suzanne Morphew, and the guys over at Adventures with Purpose, Jared and Sam, have graciously agreed to give me some time to talk about their search and what they've done. And guys, I know you've been in the Salida area. It's cold there, isn't it? Uh, it was freezing there yeah. today. Um, and because of that, that's actually changed up what, what it is that we came in to do. You know, we had four or five different uh, targets and locations planned for our search. We were actually only able to get to one of them, cutting our day short today. With that also, I, I don't know how much you've, you know, you've heard, but people coming into the area have uh, received some death threats. We have not received the death threats, but we were under watch today. In fact, uh, you know, the other gentleman and their team that we were with, they, they did have a perimeter. They did have, you know, scopes and eyes on us at all times. And we actually ended up having to be pulled out of an area uh, quickly and ahead of schedule than we really wanted it to be. So it's because uh, of the conditions or because of the folks and death threats? Because of the, uh, because of the potential safety uh, of our lives. Yeah. Can you tell me anything more about that? I mean, from the most part, being here as a Coloradan, so many people, they want answers in this case. You know, we felt we feel like we know this family, this mom. So can you tell me anything more about that, who these folks are? Well, we, we came into the area not worried about, you know, the speculation as to who may have done this. It, none of our concern. Our concern was coming into your community to look at it from an underwater world. With that, you know, one of them would, would have been the fish hatchery. One of them would have been, you know, Clear Creek Reservoir, which both of them today were frozen over. You know, as of yesterday and, you know, a couple of days leading up to this, they were not frozen over. Because of that, we were not able to get the boat out. We could not put sonar on it. We cannot dive those conditions either because the first step is, of course, putting sonar on it. So we know what to actually dive on. But if we were to go underneath the ice and we couldn't break through it, you know, now we have a safety concern as divers as well. So first and foremost, you know, our wives and our girlfriend, not our, my wife, his girlfriend would like it if, you know, we actually come home. Yep, so, kind of yeah, so, so, so we do go into it from that safety side of it. But then we also had the other safety side of it that as we're down in a creek and we're looking, and this is something that um, we're going to be putting out on Sunday, we're going to be putting our search out there on YouTube for everybody to follow. And in that, you're going to receive for the very first time publicly a shirt that was found, a blue shirt that may or may not be connected to Suzanne. It had two stab wounds, it had bullet holes in it, and it also has what appears to be bodily fluid. And this shirt was turned over not too long ago to uh, CBI and as well as the local sheriff for them to do you know, their a proper investigation. So this is brand new information that we're bringing to you right now. Was that today that you found that shirt and was it in the water or near the water? Uh, we did not find, we, we personally did not find it. The search team that we were with, um, he actually found it not too long ago and this was turned over to CBI recently. There's, um, been, there's not been any word as to the update of it, nor will I think that we'll ever anything further about, about this. But we do have, a, like I said, we do have a photo and we will be sharing this information within the video on Sunday. All right, are you able to tell me which, uh, which area that was found in? Yeah, we were up on uh, Monarch Pass is where we were at in the creek over there, not too far from where another uh, area had been sectioned off with crime scene tape about two weeks ago. So we were up upstream from that about 150 feet. And with the, with the location of where the shirt was uh, located, it was at the high water mark within the creek. So what I'm hearing from you is that you weren't able to do any, any water search today because of the icy conditions and your safety as well. We right? did a water search. We did a water search within the creek. Uh, this is a search that pretty much anybody could have done. And so with that one, I went up the center of the creek, Sam was on one side of it, Kurt was on another side of it, and we also entered uh, a mine shaft as well to do a little bit of searching in there that we ran across that nobody within the, a lot of this, as you may be aware, you know, there's been a lot of readings that have come out as well, and we're not writing anything off. And a lot of the readings lined up perfectly with what this location was. And when Kurt you know, went down to this location that he was directed to by a reading, that's when he found the shirt. You know, we talked about that mine shaft a few weeks ago when Suzanne's brother, Andy Mormon, was in town with the big group searching. And they tried to get into that mine shaft. And it's, an, it, it's north of Salida, I believe, if it's where you went. 
Yeah. Right, completely. Yeah, this is a not on any of the maps, but it was one that just happened to be next to the creek. It was not an actual target of ours intentionally, but we did check out why we were there. What's that like? What is is it an old abandoned mine, or what was that like for you guys? Yeah, so it's it's not a vertical mine. It was a horizontal mine shaft, is what we ended up uh, finding. And were you able and, to do much there? Well, what we refer to it as, you know, we leave no stone unturned for what's in our path at the time. You know, we go where we're led to go and we search what we can search at the time. Yeah. But it, was, it wasn't more than a couple of hours into our search today that the team felt as though something was not right. It was unsafe. Um, so because of that, they pulled us out based upon what they were seeing. Was law enforcement there and how, how has that relationship been in this case for you? Uh, there was no law enforcement on this one. I think a lot of what's happening right now is, you know, open source investigation. You know, us as YouTubers and Facebook and, you know, the other people that are coming together, the, the groups on the ground, we refer to this as, as an open source investigation. As social media takes over, you've seen Sam and I step into these cases where we're not working with law enforcement. We step in, we solve. The moment we identify something, that's when we call in law enforcement. And you're going to start seeing a lot more of that as not just our platform continues to grow, but, you know, just the social in, you know, in general. Yeah, it's fascinating uh, to talk to you and in, in how you're conducting um, your searches because it really becomes a crowd that all helps to get to the end result, which which can certainly be beneficial in cases like this. We, you know, not just cases like you know Suzanne, but also you know Ethan uh, Kasmarek that we just ended up doing. If it wasn't for the online community, we would not have gone back the second time. We would not have heard about it the first time. But it's because we went the first time. It's because we shared it online. Loud car over there. Sorry about that. You know, it's because we shared it the second or the, we shared it the first. Hold on. <laughs> we, like, Interrupt. Me. That's okay. <laughs> That's good. All right. So it's because of the online community, you know, that first told us about Ethan, that we went there, we did the search, we put it online, we shared the information. And then after that, we received more tips and more information. It's because of that social that we have connection with our viewers that put us back there in Hampton, Iowa again. And on that second pass, you know, within 30 minutes of us being in the water, we found Ethan. Where and that you, made the yeah. story of Suzanne, you know, ends up being is that we came, we produced, you know, some content to share with the world for what it is that we, where we searched and the information that we have. And because of this, you know, go forward and, you know, another ground team may, you know, will probably end up stepping in and solving this and possibly because of what they saw within what we're going to share. Who tipped you off and asked you to come on this case? Of Suzanne you know, we, we have so many emails. I, I could not pinpoint just one. I will say that we've probably received over just 350 to 400 in the last week alone. And that's leading up. That's not, not even including everything that's been happening since, you know, Mother's Day. Wow. What would you like to do next? I know you guys are going on holiday. You've been working hard. You've been across the country um, and you need to spend time with your families. But what do you think needs to be done in this case? And, and what would you like to be able to do if you come back? Rod, right now, one of the uh, issues that we have that you as a community have is you have weather that's a factor. You have the is this a water related or is it in fact something much bigger? some things that we've heard i mean we can't even share them yet but at the end of the day i personally right now as many readings as there are could she be in some water if she is i would be leaning towards clear clear creek reservoir right now based upon just some information that i have is she you know you know spread out in other locations you know some of the readings have indicated that you know she may be in multiple locations that we, we can't even speculate on. I mean, let's see yeah. where it go. Eventually, Suzanne is going to be found. Eventually, the you know individual or individuals responsible for this will be brought to justice in due time. Right now, the great thing about this is the community has not forgotten. And because of that, I know that there's, you know, boots on the ground right now that are not giving up. And if by chance, you know, we're able to make it back in the spring when things are thawed and they need an additional water search, we'll be there for them. Okay. Well, I know you, you've worked hard in this case, as you do in all of them. I'm sorry that you got called off for safety concerns today. Um, 
do you feel like you could have done more in the area where you were searching today if it hadn't been for that? 100%. Yeah, we have, you know, three, four more locations that we really wanted to get into. And I feel like, you know, we could have at least, you know, checked those off and said 100%, we know she's not in this location. Right now, unfortunately, we had to leave the area and we were not able to do that for the community. You feel safe now, though? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we're on the road and we're heading back to Oregon and Washington now. Great. Sam, what do you think about this case? What's your what's your take on it and working about it, uh, working with it here in Colorado? Um, and it's definitely it's a sad thing. I'm not knowing where you know someone is gone. Um, you know, I'm I feel you know grateful that we're able to go out there today. And like Jared mentioned, if nothing else, you know, we're going to be able to you know put together content to present the story that perhaps might spark the the right person. Um, or the right person to come forward or, you know, we'll just really encourage other people to come look. You know, Jared and I were just a couple of dudes, you know, we can help spark interest in others on cases that we were unable to solve. Um, but somebody else is, I mean, that's, that's a great thing, you know, so, um, so it's definitely, you know, our trip out there, you know, stopping there was definitely a success as far as that's concerned. We'll be able to get this story out there, um, you know, to our viewers. Um, but, you know, but walking away from it still, you know, it definitely pulls on your heartstrings. You know, you, you know, you wonder, you know, what, what happened, you know, what if your mind starts playing different scenarios. Um, you know, but I was you know, grateful to, you know, be a part of a little bit of the search we were able to do. And I'm hoping that this will, um, you know, spark the right person to go out and maybe find the right clues and put the right pieces together. Just keeping her name top of mind. I'm a big believer in Absolutely. that. And certainly with with your viewership. Um, that will happen some more. Have you had any contact with any of Suzanne's family, um, Barry, her brother, anyone else? Have they reached out to you? Yes, we have had some contact uh, with that. Andy did not want to meet with us this one. I feel like he's just, you know, emotionally drained on what's been going on. So, I, you know, I completely you know, respect his decision not to meet with us. But that was relayed to us through another family member. Any Anything with the husband, with Barry? No, there's, there was not. All right, guys. Well, I know you need to get on the road, get with your families. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for being here in Colorado and let's stay in touch. Okay. All right. We'll do. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Thank you very All much. Right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Safe travels.